Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today a video that I've been dying to make for you guys. A spotlight video on what appears to be the new orchid queen in my greenhouse. And I'm not joking. So in front of us today we have the beautiful Raychara or as it has been reclassified Myrmecata vola Francis Fox and it's pretty clear to see this is a gorgeous orchid but she's quite special. So today we're gonna talk about it. I was seriously considering to make a sort of an artistic video for her. This orchid can put on a little bit of a better display, so I will wait for her to do that in the following years. So I'll be sure to make one of those videos when the time comes, but definitely I need to make a spotlight. So here we have a Cadlia type orchid actually. Raychara or Myrmecaravola is actually a complex hybrid between quite a few species that are related to each other. You have the full parentage down below, but I'll mention it because it's interesting. It is a hybrid between Schomburgia or recently reclassified Myrmecophila tibicines, hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly, and BLC, which is again a complex hybrid, stands for Brassolalia catlia polka dot. So you can see how the name Myrmecaravola actually refers to Myrmecophila catlia and Brassolalia. Brassavola. Now I did a little bit of research and the Brassavola used to obtain this beautiful hybrid is none other than Nodosa, while when it comes to Catlias there are quite a few but predominantly they are Doiana hybrids actually. So on paper this orchid sounds like a great hybrid and in reality oh it's such a wonderful hybrid. So let's get you in a little closer and take a look at the flowers. So the first thing you might notice is that the flowers are not identically colored. Well this is because some of them are older than the others. This is the latest flower. This opened yesterday, I believe. When the flowers freshly open, they have a really purple lip, as you can see, and also the petals and sepals are darker. They're a very rusty orange, maroonish, purplish kind of orange. Very hard to describe, but the colors are indeed more intense. As they age, the flowers lose that purple color and become a sort of a rusty orange, yet again yellowish orange. They do still maintain the purple right inside the throat, but the actual skirt of the lip becomes orange. The petals and sepals again still maintain a little bit of that maroonish, rusty orange color, but yet again they lighten up in color. The colors do not become washed away, not in the slightest, so it's not like other orchids who lose their vividness. It's simply a color change as the flower matures. The flowers themselves are not tiny, so I'll give you a sort of a perspective. They're almost as big as my palm. This is actually not a tiny orchid, it is a Cattleya and Schomburgia hybrid, which you might already know, they're not the tiniest orchids either. So this is the entire extent of the orchid and I'll talk a little bit about the lack of pseudobulbs in a second. So as you can see, not a tiny orchid and mind you my orchid is not full capacity at the moment. In my care ever since we moved she produced this pseudobulb which is quite tiny and that one which is the one who's blooming right now. She can be bifoliate but also unifoliate due to her complex parentage. I've seen pictures on the internet with pseudobulbs that have two leaves and some that have one leaf. Um, it doesn't really mean anything. I have seen unifoliate pseudobulbs, I'm perfectly healthy, uh, Francis Fox orchids. Moreover, I've seen unifoliate pseudobulbs blooming more than the bifoliate pseudobulbs. But don't quote me on that, it's not a rule, it's just what I see. This is the very first time this orchid has bloomed for me. The flower spike arises from the top of the cane and it is quite, quite long. Since my flower spike is pendant, you cannot really tell how long it is, but this is a trait that this orchid inherited from her Schomburgia parent. The Cattleyas don't have this long flower spike. Now why the name change from Raychara to Myrmecaravola? Well, as you might suspect, it all has to do with the reclassification of Schomburgias in Myrmecophilas. Why did that happen? Well, it kind of has to do with a special feature of these orchids. The pseudobulbs of uh, the four Martian burkas are actually hollow. The outer shell is about two millimeters thick. It's not very, very thick. There's quite a large hollow inside the pseudobulbs. And as the article suggests, the Francis Fox inherited the trait of its Schimberkia parent. Now, the name Myrmecophila derives from the word Myrmecophili, which refers to a symbiotic relationship between ants and plants. And in nature, the Myrmecophila tibicins actually has such a relationship with ants. At the base of her pseudobulbs, there is a tiny entrance. And through there, ants carry all sorts of debris and deposit them inside the hollows of the pseudobulbs. 
These debris can include other dead ants, organic debris, leaves or dry leaves and so on. So at this point you might be able to see why this relationship between the plant and the ant. Well, decaying debris is the number one source of nutrients for a orchid in its natural habitat. And because this orchid has such a vast supply of nutrients right inside her pseudobulb, it's pretty easy to see how ants play a very important role in her development. So that's quite the interesting fun fact about this orchid and about her parents, like the visuals weren't enough. But as the title suggests, this is the new orchid queen of my greenhouse. Well, I'm not entirely sure. I think she shares the same spot with the Nelly Eiler at the moment. I am so undecided, I love them both. But as you know, there's only one way that any orchid can come that close as to be on the same level as the Nelly Eiler for me. And that is an orchid which has a fragrance and this one. Oh, you guys, it is so fragrant. I was absolutely not aware that this orchid is fragrant because many sources, including shops, do not say anything about it and there aren't enough discussions for me to draw a conclusion. I realized she was fragrant after a few days because she sat in a position very close to the Nelly Eiler and the Phalaenopsis Leodoro, so I always suspected those flowers were smelling, but no. So doing some research, a few people suggest this orchid smells in the nighttime, while one single person suggests it smells in the daytime. You know what the truth is? It smells both in the nighttime and in the daytime. It is the strangest thing ever, but it's beautiful. So let's describe the fragrance. It's very, very similar to Brassavola fragrances, and you might know it is one of my favorites. The scent is pretty strong. This is not a mild, fragrant orchid. It is quite strong. Now, I had a chance to smell a Brassavola nodosa hybrid and the Brassavola cuculata. And in my opinion, there is a bit of a difference between those two. And this one smells more like the Brassavola nodosa, but it has a pinch of sweetness to it. It's a very subtle difference and you cannot notice it unless you have a Brassavola nodosa right next to this one. Luckily, I have good fragrance memory, so this is just the slightest bit sweeter, which is absolutely fantastic. I dare say I like the smell of this orchid more than the Brassavolas. Now the fragrance starts to appear somewhere at midnight. Somewhere in the morning time, let's say at 6 o'clock in the morning, it's kind of strong and it is present until, let's say, noon or afternoon. When the sun shines on this orchid, it smells heavenly. But then, let's say starting from 2 p.m., it completely fades away. So in the evening, this orchid is not fragrant. The scent starts to kick off around midnight or further on. So she is fragrant both in the nighttime and in the daytime, but not all the time. I've never encountered such an orchid. At least mine is. And as I was saying, the fragrance is not mild. The corner of my greenhouse in which I keep this orchid smells like her a lot. Now that I detected the source of the fragrance, I can definitely say it overtakes the Nelly Eiler, that's for sure. It kind of overtakes the Phalaenopsis Leodoro, which, if you don't know, is a very, very strongly perfumed orchid. Mind you, the Leodoro only has one flower open at the moment, so things might change but this is powerful. If you're sensitive to fragrances, this might be an issue. So for all intents and purposes, this orchid hits all the marks. She looks wild, but elegant at the same time. Like the Nelly Eiler, which is more elegant than wild, she has one of those colors that I really, really like. The orange, rusty orange, and this really deep purple, such a great contrast. She is absolutely, fantastically fragrant and has a bonus over the Nelly Eiler, actually. She is not finicky at all. If you can take care of Calia hybrids, whatever Calia hybrids you find on the market, complex, easy to care for, then you will be able to care for this orchid as well. The only thing she really, really does like is a lot of light. She currently gets Vandalite, and as you can see, she's really not reddening up all that much. I have some reddening on the pseudobulb right here, but not a lot. She can take a lot of light and she actually loves it, so that's a little bit of a downside. If you don't have a location with very, very bright light, it might be an issue. I'm not entirely sure since this is the first time it bloomed for me, but I've always kept her in Vandalite, which means direct sunshine filtered through a sheer curtain, and it gets this intense light for more than half of the day. She also is a warm to hot grower. She tolerates heat very, very well, is not finicky about humidity and all of those things, so if you cannot provide the humidity that Miltoniopsis and Nelly Eiler prefer, 
it's okay. This one can take it. So for all intents and purposes, she's easier to care for than the Nelly Eiler. She also bounces back faster and easier. I'm not sure if you remember who this one is. It's one of the back divisions that Ana Maria sent me last year. It wasn't in the ICU chamber because this came a month or so afterwards. It was right before I moved to my new location. So she has been through a lot of things, but she bounced back really fast, grew two pseudobulbs in one year for me, and one of them bloomed. And I have a three flower display, which is pretty common from what I see, but this orchid can produce five, even six flowers. Therefore, I'm gonna wait a little bit with that artistic video. But even with this display, which is, it's not shabby, you guys, it's not a mediocre display, I am absolutely in love with this orchid, and I have days in which I like her more than the Nelly Eiler, and days in which I think the Nelly Eiler is still my favorite. Very hard to decide, so right now, they are equal. After all of this time, I found an orchid which is equal to the Nelly Eiler. Can you believe it? So, if you kind of like how this orchid looks like, then absolutely go for it. So alrighty guys, thank you for watching, hope you've enjoyed this, let me know what you think about this one, which one do you think is better, the Nelly Eiler or this one? Visual wise at least, fragrance wise, just think of Brassavola, this is how she smells like and it's pretty powerful. While the Nelly Eiler has that really pretty lemon scent, so let me know down below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, if you hated it, give it a thumbs down, subscribe to my channel for daily orchids and plants videos, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video, and stay tuned for another amazing orchid in a few days, it's still growing, anyway, you'll see what I'm talking about, so I'll see you guys next time, bye! Another orchid that is preparing to bloom is the Vanagara Apple Blossom. Yet another one of my favorites, I have so many favorites. This is, however, not a queen, but she's absolutely gorgeous. And ever since I got her, she never made more than two or three flowers, if I remember correctly. Well, this year, I'm counting six buds so far. But if it just so happens to be more than this, I'm not gonna be upset. Problem is, um, yeah, she's growing into the curtain. I need to totally move her until the flowers bloom.